DC Multiverse vs. Marvel Legends. Let's do this. Hello and welcome back to the Nerd Room. For James Charmack here for a brand new figure review comparison video for you. So today we are doing something different. We are doing DC vs. Marvel. We're doing DC Multiverse vs. Marvel Legend figures. We're going to, you know, go difference between the boxes, we're going different between quality of, say, build of figure parts, we're going to go articulation differences, we're going to go likeness differences, you name it, we're going to do it, we're going to see how it goes, and see who comes out the victor, or at least I'll let you judge and decide, so, really excited to do it, haven't done this type of thing before, per se, in your company, so, let's, uh, get on to it, shall we? Okay, so this is probably gonna be my most random video ever because we're gonna use different figures to, for different examples as we're gonna discuss the multiverse figures versus the legend figures. So obviously box is no different. So I'm using two different multiverse boxes just because they decided to change designs and legends and more or less stayed the same. All they've done is switch logos. Anyways, you can tell the difference primarily between the legends and the DCs because they have this little cardboard thing blocking away where as you can see with the legends you can see right in and see the uh, build a figure part there is none for Shazam but there is a build a figure part for the legends of tomorrow Hawkman and you can't see it because they have it blocked out for the cardboard why because it's a surprise or whatever anyways uh, with all three boxes you have uh, the company logos DCs down there up there and uh, Marvel's right there on the bottom they have obviously uh, the product placement, Shazam, Legends of Tomorrow, Spider-Man Far From Home. And uh, they know where the figure is. It's uh, Legends of Tomorrow, Hawkman, and uh, Spider-Man from Spider-Man Shazam. Turn to the side, you have the various... Uh, that one doesn't stand up so well just because that's a wonky design. It, for some reason they, they have it at a tilt for that reason, I don't know. But you have nice uh, pictures of uh, the actors in their roles, Shazam, Hawkman, and Spider-Man. So they're all, uh, they have the text for Hawkman on the sides, which is really weird. But anyways, that is what it is. And that, that box design, clearly they change around because it doesn't want to stand up on its own. So we'll turn to the back. Shazam kind of more ape the uh, Spider-Man, the uh, Marvel Universe version, I guess. So much with uh, has the uh, not only the character designs but the, the you know text of for each character so you can see it right there. Spider Man's up there, Sam's up there, and the uh, older DC multiverse has just uh, the, the build a figure description and what figures come with what. So turn it back, you have the same artwork, different direction. Can't really turn that one because obviously it does it does that. Back to the front, has that stuff up there, DC's right up there. So yep, yeah, there you go, those are the boxes, so um, let's talk build the figure parts. Okay, so let's talk build the figures from each company. Uh, so I'm using a Juggernaut, and I'm using a Doomsday uh, left arm. Figuously, figures I haven't been able to build yet or find the correct parts for, so. Anyways, looking at it, that have uh, pretty decent detail to it. The Dragonite has nice veins, muscles, but the, the Doomsday has the bones and whatnot. <laughs> you know, I kind of prefer, like, the Juggernaut. Not, I think it has more of an expression to it, with a, especially around the fist area, am I right? And it had the joint looks kind of better than the uh, DC one. So I might have to get this point for uh, Marvel Legends. However, I will say that they do... DC does, you know, a better effort at trying to hide, the, say, the pin joints as opposed to the Marvel Legends. And it has, like, about the same amount of articulation as the uh, shoulder joint has the one at the elbow and uh, got that wrist articulation. Same thing for the DC one. So let's uh, talk uh, the regular figure articulation, I guess. Okay, so for uh, detail likeness, I'm going to go with uh, another Thorn God. We're going to go with Thor here. 
even though I did cheat and basically switch the heads on him with uh, the Thor Ragnarok figure. But, you know, I just don't like the... It's, I don't like the uh, yellow tinge. Anyways, they both have great detail on it. They both look pretty much exactly like the counterparts. You know, fantastic textures on both outfits. And, uh, you know, capes are fantastic too on them. If Thor wants to stand up. I don't know why he can't stand up the other way. Anyways, it's, uh, you know, both have great detail, great paint apps on it for, for what it is. Nice silver on the Thor, nice gold accents on Shazam. So let's uh, talk that articulation. Now, articulation-wise, they're very close. Like, DC Multiverse is trying to, you know, see what Marvel Legends is doing and get, you know, with it. Obviously, the legs are different than they used to be. Just, they're, they used to have a weird articulation to it. But they really haven't really worked so much on the uh, double joint at the elbow, just because that looks kind of weird. As opposed to, say, the Marvel Legends looks almost natural. But otherwise, you know, no real complaints with the articulation on them. Now, accessory-wise, I kind of think DC Multiverse dropped the ball with this figure. I think that since he's a Thunder God, you could do what the Marvel Legends does and say, say Thor the Thunder God does have electricity or elect electrical effects. Whereas uh, DC, Legends, DC just says, let's give him some fists and some hands. So... It's a little disappointing just because you'd be cool to see him do that lightning from his hands kind of thing. But it is what it is, I guess. Alright, so let's talk scale here. So, DC Multiverse needs a little work done. I don't understand how Superman, say, could be shorter than Batman, shorter than The Flash, just a little bit taller than Wonder Woman, but it is what it is. I mean, the Jace, the uh, Aquaman, he's supposed to be tall, and but and Batman's supposed to be like tall too, because Affleck's like six four. So you know, I think they could do better with uh, their uh, scale set. And let's talk Marvel Legends. We're using the uh, MCU figures, for example, just because you can tell, you know, they put more of an interest in trying to make it screen accurate with their heights. Like, Hulk is going to be the biggest, of course. Tony Stark in just his regular outfit is going to be kind of, you know, not so much. But he is bigger in the Iron Man suit, so they kind of made it look like that can work. And uh, pretty much, you know... Along the board, there's a huge difference in heights from everyone else. So, yeah, they work more into that. So that is my video comparing the Marvel Legends and DC Multiverse lines of figures. And uh, I do prefer Marvel Legends a bit more. I think they, you know, have, they've had the line so long that they've actually kind of perfected likeness, detail, articulation, and whatnot, and... I mean, it's sad to see that Mattel lost a DC license, but I think with a couple more years, they could have just been up there and made them figures pop a little bit more. Not to say that Shazam doesn't look good, but you know that if they you know had a little longer to refine the figures, it would have been fantastic. They could have been you know a worthy competitor to say Hasbro and their Marvel Legends, but it is what it is. So anyways, that's it for this comparison video. If you guys like this, I really need you to hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know. Like if you want to see me compare whatever brand to whatever brand, I'll see what I can do. I do dig doing these comparison videos. Um, anyways, that's it for the Nerd Room today. James Sharmack signing out saying happy hunting and keep on collecting.